Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are reading Genesis uh, chapters 6 through 9 and uh, Psalm 3. And so let's jump right in and, uh, and read together. It says, When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. And then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great, great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof and opening one cubit high all around. Uh, put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and will enter, and you will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And the Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the floodwaters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds, and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark, as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the floodwaters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. And on that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them, came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah, and then the Lord shut him in. And for 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And as the waters increased, they lifted the, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished, birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. 
Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. And the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. And at the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After 40 days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not could find nowhere to perch because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and he took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. And he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. And when the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. And he waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. But this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. And then God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. And so Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the land came out of the ark, one kind after another. And then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. And the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Chapter 9. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth, and on all the birds in the sky, on every creature that moves along the ground, and on all the fish of the sea, they are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves about, about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each human being too. I will demand an accounting for the life of another human being. Whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. And then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. And so God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. And the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. And these were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the whole earth. 
Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. And when he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Je Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders, and then they walked in backwards and covered their father's naked body. And their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father naked. And when Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. And he also said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem, Shem, and may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. And after the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Noah lived a total of 950 years, and then he died. All right. Psalm 3. Psalm 3, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie deep, I, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. All right, it's a pretty powerful psalm. Um, verse 3 is what I, I uh, underlined in there. Uh, but you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. Um, I call out to the Lord. He answers me. It's a pretty awesome the thought of God being a shield um, around us. And the one who lifts up our head, especially when, I mean, like the psalmist says, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded on every side. And uh, um, what a comfort it was, was to him in knowing that God was, was surrounding him and was around him, um, even in distress. That's something that's um, a valuable reminder for us that the Lord is faithful, even in our difficult times. Um, in Genesis, uh, I underlined a, a couple of things. One was, uh, you know, just the covenant. It's nice to see the reminder of what the rainbow um, actually represents. That uh, God has established a covenant uh, between himself and, uh, and the entire earth and all living things that uh, he'll never destroy it by a flood again. And that's a reminder to God of the covenant that he has made and also a reminder to us. And then I also... Um, I also um, underlined a, a couple of other things. Um, it's interesting, you know, if, if anybody ever asks, you know, the whole idea of eating meat, um, it's in, in this moment in Noah, um, in Genesis, where God actually tells Noah, um, originally they ate plants, and then God, after the flood and everything, God gave um, animals also for, uh, for meat for the, them to eat as well, um, which was, you know, obviously a result of the fact that it was going to take a while for, you know, the earth to, uh, to replenish. And so God was supplying um, Noah um, and his family with, uh, with food to eat. And um, so that's an important um, lesson to learn. Uh, another thing, if you notice in uh, Genesis uh, chapter seven, um, as the animals are coming in, it says they come in um, according, God tells him, I'm going to send you the animals and they're, you're going to take in according to their kind. And so there are different kinds of species in order for them to not be wiped out. God made sure that each kind um, was brought in um, into, the, uh, into the ark. If you ever wonder about that, the difference between uh, biblical creationism and you know, the, um, evolutionary theory, I'd really encourage you to go to um, Answers in Genesis. Um, you can just type that in, you know, Google search an AnswersInGenesis.org, uh, and uh, they have a tremendous amount of great videos in, uh, in helping you understand the ideas of creationism uh, versus this just kind of evolutionary 
theory that we just kind of evolved and um, uh, we, we do as Christians believe in, in adaptation that animals adapt to the various environments, but we don't evolve from one species to another. Uh, God has created us, God has created humans and humans are humans and animals are animals and apes are apes and dogs are dogs. And there are various kinds of dogs, various species of dogs. And, uh, but, but each kind is different. That's important for us to understand as Christians and to understand that uh, sometimes these scientific theories that, uh, um, quite honestly, you know, atheistic uh, people uh, em embrace, um, they don't embrace what biblical truth is. And, and just logically, even as you look around, you see the truth of the matter is that, uh, that there are various species of different, you know, um, you know, animals. And uh, but but they don't they don't become a different type of animal, you know. And so uh, go to go to Answers in Genesis and uh, and check it out. And there are just some tremendous videos uh, to uh, to really em, em, you know empower you uh, to uh, to be able to give an answer for uh, for your faith and to be able to understand uh, that the Bible does speak to some of these things that uh, that um, you know sometimes uh, um, people. Uh, struggle with. Um, so you know, those are just a few of the things that uh, that I want to encourage you to uh, uh, to consider. Um, also, you know, we mentioned the Ark. If you've never been to the uh, the Ark uh, Museum in Kentucky, uh, the Answers in Genesis actually built a replica, and it is gigantic. It is unbelievable, and it is worth the trip. Sometime, if you're ever traveling through Kentucky, make sure that you take the time to go uh, to the um, Creation Museum. And to the uh, to the ark, and you will be truly, truly uh, blown away because they actually built it according to the specs, and you'll be able to see how it was designed. So, all right, well, let's pray together, and you uh, know, um, we'll come back together uh, tomorrow. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for uh, just the reminder, God, that you have created us, God, uh, very specifically and intentionally. And uh, Lord, we we thank you, God, for um, Lord, for the fact that you are the God of covenant, that you established your covenant with uh, with humanity, you established your covenant with Noah, uh, that you would no longer, uh, that you would not destroy the earth again. Um, and uh, God, that you, you, you are a God of redemption and a God um, who gives second chances. And Lord, we thank you for that. And uh, God, we just, um, we pray that uh, today as we go about our business that we would be reminded, Lord, um, of what you did uh, for humanity and rebuilding it and that your heart breaks over sin and the destruction that it brings. And uh, Lord, but you gave an opportunity through the cleansing work of Jesus Christ on the cross uh, to change our hearts, to change our minds so that sin will no longer reign over our bodies and our minds and our, our, our lives. And so Lord, I just, we thank you God for the new covenant that you've made with us through Jesus Christ. And uh, Lord, I just uh, pray that you would um, bless each one that is uh, joining me today. And uh, Lord, just guide them in every step that they take today. And Lord, we love you. And we thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again for joining me. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful day.